This is Jesus Manuel Mena Garza. I hope you're having a really good day. In this video, I talk about photography and specifically about photographers. Four photographers that I really like. Starting off with Richard Avedon, also Ansel Adams, Diana Arbus, and Hiroshi Sugimoto. So let me talk about some of these photographers. I have my little notes right here. It's not much. So this video is very short. So uh, in the description, you'll find links to some of their work on Wikipedia. I'm not gonna be making money off links to Amazon or anything crazy like that. These are just links to some of the photographies, uh, you know, you know where, it, where it came from, their, their origins, some of their stories, and some of their exhibitions and books that came out as a result of their fine, fine work. So these are photographers I really like. These are the cream of the crop according to me Things, uh, you know, photographers that influenced my life when I became a photographer back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and today in uh, 2018, okay? First off is Richard Avedon. He's a well-known fashion photographer, portrait photographer from New York City. So he's done some of the greatest fashion photographs in, in modern history, okay? So he's a technical master and aesthetic master. So used to working with beautiful, absolutely gorgeous people and posing them in certain situations and in certain uh, environments that really make these photographs outstanding. One of his uh, later works was, uh, let me read it here. In 1985, Avedon branched out. Uh, the Eamon Carter Museum of Fort Worth, Texas funded and presented in the American West photographs by Richard Avedon. So these photographs, uh, he was commissioned by the local uh, museum here, the Fort Worth uh, uh, Eamon Carter Museum, and they paid for him to go out there in the American West and take photographs, portraits of individuals. He brought a crew with him. Not many photographers out there bring crews, but he had the money and the funding from the Eamon Carter to take a crew out with him and take these absolutely gorgeous photographs. He shot them with a camera, an eight by 10 inch film camera, and they came out amazing. You should check out this book if you have a chance. So, fashion photographer, photographer of the beautiful people to the not so beautiful people, the working class folks out there that are getting dirty, doing work in the cattle industry, the, the meat and poultry industry, and you know, working in the mines. They were gritty and dirty. From beautiful and made up, absolutely fabulous photographs, to the gritty, nitty gritty of the American West. I seriously recommend that you check out his work and learn how a high quality uh, photographer from you know, using an 8x10 camera in the studio, to using an 8x10 camera and a crew also in the field. He did this, it's amazing. Most documentary photographers just take their 35 millimeter camera and go out there and try their best by themselves, maybe with their wife, maybe with an assistant. But he took a whole crew, amazing. The second photographer is Ansel Adams, and again, let me read this. Ansel Easton, Adams was an American landscape photographer and environmentalist. Uh, his black and white images of the American West are iconic. So he's famous for his photographs of uh, Yosemite, uh, Yellowstone, uh, various uh, landscapes of, in New Mexico and such. So he was a master. Also he shot with an 8x10 film camera. I grew up in San Francisco and Ansel Adams was born in San Francisco. He had a studio down the road in Carmel and I had many an opportunity to go to Carmel and visit the, you know, the different museums and galleries in that region. He's an amazing landscape photographer. I, as a photographer, I'm not much of a landscape photographer. I am a documentary photographer. I like taking pictures of people straight on. But what he did, there's a line that some people use, he made people look like rocks and rocks look human, the landscape look, you know, absolutely gorgeous. So he took beautiful pictures of beautiful scenery in black and white of uh, the American West and also different environments out there. He rarely shot people, but he shot incredible landscapes. To this day, there's a, you know, there's a, a hell of a lot of landscape photographers. You know, anybody from their little point and shoot camera to their gigantic cameras are trekking out there and trying to emulate the work of Ansel Adams, the greatest landscape photographer in the history of the United 
States. So if you're interested in looking up his work, check it out. He's also famous for being, you know, an innovator in the technology of photography. He used, quote unquote, the zone system. He also used modified developers to create his photographs. Previous to him in the, in the Bay Area, there was what you call the pictorialist movement. Everybody tried to be more artsy-fartsy, you know, make their pictures look like a painting. He got away from that and with the F-64 group in Carmel, created what's called the realist movement, photographing what's actually there and trying to get the detail, not to make it look like a painting, but make it look, you know, what you saw there and try to capture it intact, you know. So he's a fantastic photographer, I recommend checking his work. The third photographer, uh, I, I really love her work. She's absolutely nuts, crazy. She's a crazy woman. <laughs> she loved to photograph freaks. That's the term a lot of people use. She loved to photograph freaky people out there. You know, not mainstream. You know, people that are outside the mainstream. You know, like I might be considered a freak to certain people, but she photographed, you know, dwarfs, you know, transgender people, old folks, and, and going to these cotillions sort of like events. And, you know, amazing photographs. She shot it with a, you know, uh, a 110 camera. I mean, you know, a little small uh, 120 camera and a roll film camera. And uh, she, she captured these events and people out in the streets of New York and those environments. She is totally amazing. She captured reality. She popped that flash and you can see all the details in an old lady's face, all the crinkles, all the bad makeup, and you know, all that gray hair and that mink fur and all that, the opulence and you know, the juxtaposition of the age and the beauty in the same photograph. And you know, crazy little kids out there in the park holding grenades, plastic grenades, and doing crazy stuff. She was the original, in my opinion, one of the most original and one of the first street photographers out there. There's a whole you know, genre right now called street photography where you go out there and you take pictures of people uh, in the street. You capture buildings, you capture infrastructure, and you capture people doing wild and crazy things. If you go in a major city, you're gonna see some freaky people. So she did that. She was a, the, one of the originators of that genre. Finally, one of my favorite photographers, if you're into uh, Ansel Adams, Ansel Adams, you know, photographed the beauty out there, the obvious, obvious beauty out there of, of the natural environment, okay? Hiroshi Sugimoto, he captured something that wasn't necessarily obvious, maybe banal, and made it look beautiful, like an interior, he would go in the balcony of a theater and photograph the screen, you see this wide expanse, and then you see the columns on the side of the screen and the curtains, and he would photograph that and do a series of various theater interiors. Very esoteric, very banal, but absolutely gorgeous. So he would go to the ocean, photograph the waves, only the waves, and he called this one the Pacific Ocean, this one the Indian Ocean, and you see these waves, you see these dark, dark images, barely seeing the undulation of the water and the gradation of tones. Again, the term gradation of tone is very important in landscape and environmental photography, getting the subtleties of the gradations of tones. That's what delineates an excellent photographer, the, tech, the technical merit and the aesthetic merit to those that can't you know, accomplish that. They have some fuzzy, bad, you know, you know, quality photographs. So Hiroshi Sugimoto. Let me read a little bit of his, uh, what he says here. His primary series includes seascapes, theaters, dioramas, and more. I've been to, uh, I've seen his work at museums and galleries like in San Francisco, just a couple blocks from, uh, you know, the, the center of town, you know, Union Square. You can go to like this galleries, these galleries on 49 Geary Street, and they have a whole, you know, four or five floors of, you know, galleries. And I saw his work there, you know, 24 by 36 inch prints, absolutely gorgeous. So this has been Asus Manuel Menegarza. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And in the description, I'll have links to their Wikipedia page and some of their work. I'm not going to be making money off this video. Like, I, you know, I only do this because I enjoy photography. My background in photography, I graduated with a degree in photography. I worked as a commercial photographer and as a documentary photographer. My photographs have been exhibited in Europe. Mexico, United States, coast to coast. I've given lectures before the Smithsonian. My photographs are in the collection of the Smithsonian. I've given lectures at UC Berkeley, you know, in LA, 
you know, Washington, D.C., the list goes on and on. So I know a little bit about photography, just a little bit. These photographers are absolutely fantastic. If you have a chance, check out their work. If you want to make your work a little bit, a little bit better, and understand what's taking place in those images. Learn about their process. Learn about their technology. Learn about their aesthetics, and you'll improve your photography. Again, this has been Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.